in the end, nobody's going to care about how many units you bought during your career or how many units you sold or what your net worth was or how big of a building you built back in the day. The most elite investors in the world that I get to work with, they place enormous importance on time with their family, their friends, and personal hobbies. And as a result, they've grown an enormous multifamily business. In this video, I'm gonna read the bonus chapter in my new book, Multifamily Investors Who Dominate. No matter what business you're in, you're gonna to wanna to stick around on this one. Let's go! As we all know, real estate is an extremely demanding business. In the early stages, you work a ton of hours and you're just looking for the next deal and you never notice all the hours you're actually working. You get your first deal done and then you buy your second apartment complex and before you know it, you've done your fifth and sixth deal. And then you start to feel like there's so much work to do, you could work 24 seven and really never catch up. And have you noticed that the better you get at investing, the more busy you become? It can be exciting, but can also be a very vicious circle if you don't get it under control. Whether you're a small investor with a full-time job and investing in apartments as a side hustle, or all the way up to a large regional or national investment company, you have to keep a focus on the things that matter or you're gonna hit the wall. And unfortunately, as many of you know, the crash and burn sometimes has to happen to get your attention. Now in my 20 plus year career of brokering multifamily assets, you can imagine I've met a lot of investors and seen them hit the wall. I can tell you that the vast majority of them are males between 40 and 55 years old, and they're at the top of their game and they appear to have the best life. They have the wonderful spouse, the kids, the dog, the nice big house, and the expensive cars, and they live in a great neighborhood. I'm gonna read a story to you directly from the book about a real person I know who eventually became an elite investor. We'll use his name as Joe. Joe had been buying small multifamily properties since the late 1990s. As a 22-year-old with no spouse and no kids, he would work his tail off. He yearned for the grind. He loved it. He would grind for 80 plus hours for weeks at a time. We all know that. He did this for years. He eventually got married, had kids, and was growing his personal brand as an elite investor. He'd wake up every day at 4.30 a.m., work out, eat breakfast, work till 7 p.m., eat dinner, then work until midnight every day, seven days a week. But the work started to grind him down. Nonetheless, as a type A personality, he kept working insane hours, doing more and more business. He spent as much time as he could with his wife and kids, but never as much as he wanted. If you ask his kids what their dad liked to do, they would always say, he works. By 2017, after being in the investment business for 18 years, Joe told me he was beginning to have a hard time breathing. He said it started off slow and for months he just felt like he couldn't get a full breath. He wasn't concerned yet, but the symptom never went away. He said he only got relief when he finally fell asleep. He was so busy and had so many deals he was working, he felt like he just couldn't stop or even slow down. Whenever we talked, he genuinely believed he'd be able to catch up on his work, but it never happened. Every day, more work piled up. By 2018, the elephant on his chest was getting heavier. Now he was worried because his breathing range kept getting smaller each day. He felt like he was suffocating. In February of that year, he called me and said that he had his first panic attack. He seriously thought he was going to die right there at the gym because he thought he was having a heart attack, not a panic attack. He was rushed to the hospital and underwent all sorts of tests. The test indicated that he was healthy. The doctor said he was just stressed out. He argued that point with the doctor. He said he had nothing to be stressed about. He'd always been in real estate, always done deals, always had a big workload, and that his life was great. When Joe got home from the hospital, he got back to work to catch up on the five hours he missed while he was in the emergency room. A month later, he had another 
panic attack. Back to the emergency room, more tests, still perfectly healthy. This time though, Joe finally conceded to the doctors that he was suffering from too much stress. With help from his wife and friends, Joe decided to completely change his ways. He met with a counselor to figure out why he needed to work so much to achieve some undefined level of success, even when he didn't need any more money or security. He discovered he was just never content. He always felt like he had to do more, achieve more, be the best. It was part ego for sure. Over the years, he had let his career be what defined him. He lost focus on what was actually important. He was spending so much time trying to be something he thought was important when no one really cared about how many assets he bought or how much money he had. Now, Joe has his work week down to 50 hours per week. He never works past 6 p.m. Monday through Friday, and he never works on the weekends unless it is something he actually enjoys. Now he is building awesome memories with his family. He has truly learned what contentment is and his business has never been better. Removing that elephant from his chest made him a better person. He is a better employer with his associates. He has more deals brought to him and he just smiles more now. As a multifamily broker, I have lunches all the time with investors and other people related in my industry. Property managers, attorneys, title people, lenders. When I'm at those lunches, I oftentimes hear similar stories from my lunchmate about how they became successful in a business and built a name and then got stressed and then endured health issues. Now, most everyone I talked to was able to recover and change their ways. Some of them had to fight off suicidal thoughts and depression. As a result, I try to tell my friend Joe's story as much as I can to broaden someone's perspective and, of course, in part to remind myself to focus on family, friends, and hobbies. Here's something to keep in mind. John Penkevel of Stanford University studied productivity, and what he found was the more hours you work, you do increase productivity, but only only up to 50 hours. After 50 hours, productivity decreases, and after 55 hours, productivity plummets. Real estate investing is a magnet for type A personalities, high achievers with extreme work ethics. Most yearn for financial success and will work themselves to the bone to achieve it, to get the cars and the houses and the boats. I would take a moment to ask yourself how content you really are. Remember, contentment is not complacency. Another solid quote from the book, committing to your hobbies, family, and friends from a time perspective forces you to make better, more efficient decisions in your business because you are controlling the total time you allocate to work. When you make family, friends, and personal hobbies your priority, I promise you, you will attract better staff, more investors to your fund, and more importantly, more deals from brokers because they want to be with people who have that kind of balance and priority set. When you gain control of your work hours and your priorities, instead of chasing your tail for 80 plus hours a week, you will have more time to come up with fantastic ideas on how to grow your status as an elite investor. I really hope this video brought you value. And if it did, give me a like and a subscribe down below, and I'll see you on the next one.